Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motors Studio, here's Steve Jones. Today's show brought to you by Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors Camp, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's World. All right, let's get to our play-by-play call of the day. Three, Miami inbounds. Here's Butler with three. Butler with two, with one. Butler against Matthews gets it away, and no good. Do we have a foul? We do. A foul is called. It's times on the clock when the foul occurred here. Is it Giannis? Where, where's the foul there? Scoring here, but Miami up 2 nothing in the series. Wow. All right. Okay. Here comes... Oh, boy. Why do I feel like I'm doing the get-off-your-lawn day here? I want. I I actually watched both those games last night. I actually watched both those games. Here's what's interesting. Let's talk about the Milwaukee. The first game there, Milwaukee and Miami, last night. I'm watching. It's interesting. I probably have seen Giannis Antetokounmpo play. I don't know, 14, 15 times. You know how many times I've watched them and I thought, wow, this guy's great? None. Zero. He's come up real small. No, but I'm saying in the 14 or 15 times I've watched him play, I've been like, hey, he's good. But man, he is limited. Well, I mean, let's start with this. This is what I really like about him. A, I think he's a terrific defender. He is really a good defensive player. Really good fundamentals. He's a good defensive player. Really good. Two, he's a very good rebounder. Three, he is outstanding at driving to the bucket. Four, he's a great finisher. But here's the other part. He has no outside game. None. Every game I watch, he can't hit a shot. Free throw? Roll the dice. That's the MVP of the league? Really? All right. Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler comes up big in another playoff moment. I'm I'm hearing this last night. I'm like, what? Did you watch the game I watched? Hey, there's seconds left in the game. The ball's thrown into him. All right? Makes the catch. The Bucs, to their credit, a brilliant double team. Keep in mind, Miami has not one but two timeouts remaining. So does Captain Cool in the playoffs, who's double teamed, call one of the timeouts? No. He throws the ball back to to his own basket. Okay? What's the one thing every coach on the planet teaches all the time in basketball? Don't throw the ball back to your own basket. But the greatest playoff guy ever, Jimmy Butler, I mean, he self-proclaimed, I watch ESPN, he's Jimmy Playoff. Like, really? I'm like, oh, what the heck? He's missing shots left, left and right last night, and he makes really one of the dumbest mistakes I've seen anybody make. I mean, he was dumb. Then they call the foul. Then, then the officiating, Dragic, who's a really good player. I like Dragic a lot. Middleton gets the ball, Chris Middleton, and makes exactly the right play, the right move, the whole thing. It's, you know, they need a three, boom, and he gets it, boom, and he goes and he steps into a three. Dragic is standing there with his hands straight up. 
Well, Middleton goes into him. It's a no call. Because Dragic is literally standing there with his hands up. And they call the foul, and then Middleton, to his credit, goes to the line, go bang, 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 knocks down all three. Then there's that foul at the end. You heard Dave Pash and Doris Burke there. Antetokounmpo kind of gets him after he releases the ball and just like, eh, a little, and that's a foul? Really? And then Butler comes this close to missing it. It goes in front, back, and it fell through. All right. The last two minutes of that game last night, just bad basketball. Just bad basketball. Then I, now I'm going to watch Oklahoma City Houston. James Harden, another game seven, where the announcers had to come up with 18 different ways of saying no good. They didn't want to be redundant. Then there's this sequence, which they, let's see, I think Mark Jones described. What a wild sequence. Well, here's the wild sequence. Okay? Houston gets the ball. It was Gordon whom I thought was a good player at Indiana. I never thought he'd be this good in the NBA, but he is. He's a great shooter. Crosses the midcourt stripe. Oklahoma City tries to double. Chris Paul flops. Give the official credit, no call. But then the ball's knocked away, and Oklahoma City goes the other way, and then James Harden flops, no call. And then the shot's missed. And then there's a foul, and there's free throws. What a great sequence. Great. So I watched two guys flop. And to the credit of the officials, no calls. <laughs> it's just... I'll say that Russell Westbrook played terrific last night. He was really good. <laughs> it's just the, the last two minutes, three minutes of each game stunk. Bad basketball. Bill Engel say Jimmy Butler has had a very good postseason so far and a good series with the Bucs. Not last night. Look, I don't look at – you know what? The heck with the box score. I've watched him play. He's been no better than okay. But I agree. I, I still think he's a goof. He had 40 the other – he's a good player. Jimmy Butler is a good player. Jimmy Butler is not a great player. I mean, the way they he is portrayed – by the league and on ESPN and so forth. It's like he's a Hall of Famer. He'll probably get there because Springfield seems to let everybody in. But I'm sitting there like, oh, what the heck? And I still Jimmy believe, Butler, too, he is a big problem in the locker room when things aren't well, going well. And that's pro- part of the problem right. what happened with the Sixers last year. Right. That part I don't know. I will say this. I think Jimmy Butler is also an excellent defender. He's a really good defender. You can see he's got really good defensive fundamentals. But he's, you know, I think overall he is a B plus offensive player. That's fine. B plus offensive players thrive and have long careers. Oh, he comes up. I mean, the problem with the NBA is they can get away with because people don't watch full games. Last night was one of those nights for whatever reason. I watch full games. Now I'm watching the full game. I'm sitting there going, what am I watching here? He's the MVP of the league again, and I'm like, oh, yeah. and you look at the stats. He had 27 and 14, but it's like, it's like, kind of felt like he had a minimal impact in the game. And Harden was bad. And Harden made a really good defensive play at the end. Really good. He blocked a three. Heck of a play. Great play. But they made it seem like the greatest defensive play since Havlicek stole, stole the ball. Eh, not really. I mean, <sighs> I know it sounds like it's the get off your lawn thing. I know it does. Yeah, you especially are based... all sorts on fire today. But I'm, but I'm, I'm sick and tired of people not being realistic about what the heck they're looking at. I think the, the the NBA has more great athletes in it than at any time in the history of the league. I really I really believe that. But there are certain individuals that are being portrayed to be bigger than life. That's the part that gets me. I'm sitting there going, I watch a lot of basketball. I think you're really, really good, but you're not bigger than life. 
I mean, to be honest with you, there's only w one player, and maybe I can make an argument for a couple of others that are bigger than life in this league. LeBron's obviously one. I think when Steph Curry is not hurt, he is. All right. And Kevin Durant certainly could be like that. But everybody else, like Russell Westbrook, well, he was the first player since Oscar Robertson to average a triple-double. That's really impressive. But then when you watch the game, like it's like he's the only guy out there doing stuff. Now, yeah, he obviously a triple-double. He has to have assists so other people have to finish. But... And he was forced to do it because he didn't have quite the talent around him, too. That's the other part. That's why it's been interesting watching him with Houston. Last night, they needed him to play the way he played last night. And, it, you know, and I thought Russell Westbrook played really well last night. I thought Gordon played really well. Chris Paul, he lives for this moment. He's been waiting for this moment. Turnover. Like, oh, jeez. Chris Paul's old. He's done. Actually, I've liked the way he's played in the playoffs. To be honest with you, I think Chris Paul has played better played better in that seven-game series than he did last year for Houston. I will give him that, but he still is done. You know? He's just not the same guy. Well, you know what? Oklahoma City's not where they are last night without him. I will say that, I will say that in his defense. Because remember, right. they deal what Russell Westbrook. They deal Russell Westbrook, who's the heart and soul of what they do in everything. And Oklahoma City still makes the playoffs, and they take this team to a seventh game. He's a big reason why. Yeah, Steven Adams is good. They got a couple other guys. Or, I mean, Dort's a D League guy, or G League guy. I give him credit for doing what he was doing. But they try to make this league and it, it, the players in, the, in this league into bigger than life. And I sit there and go, okay, LeBron's awesome. I, I think Kawhi Leonard's an interesting player because. He is a great player, but he doesn't um, he doesn't promote himself. How about that? And Kawhi is a great player. He's a great defender. He's a great offensive player. He's just a great player. I think Jamal Murray's become a guy I, I enjoy watching playing the game. I think Donovan Mitchell's been like that. You know, and here's the ESPN. LeBron, LeBron versus Harden in NBA f is an NBA's fan dream. I got news for them. That series is going to stink because I think the Rockets are in for a rude awakening with the way they played and how inconsistent they've been. I can see the well, Lakers can... sweeping them. Well, here's the here's the big part about that. The Lakers, who, by the way, I thought looked tired at times against Portland? Yeah, they haven't looked good at all in the postseason either. Like, it, it's going to be a very sloppy series, but because the Rockets have but been they, just so bad, I think it's still going to be a sweep by the Lakers. But here is where the Lakers caught a break. All right? Now, boycotting's not catching a break, but boycotting also meant they didn't have to play for two days. Okay? And then Oklahoma City and Houston went to seven games. The Lakers have played one game in ten days. They're rested. And they haven't been flying anywhere, going anywhere. They're in the bubble. They, uh, they're they rested. At a time they needed rest, that's the big plus for them. Uh, you know, there's some young guys in this league, like Tatum of the, of the Celtics. So he's got star written all over him. He's a heck of a player. Kemba Walker, I always wanted to see how he'd play when he was surrounded by great talent. He's, he has certainly lived up to it. He's been great. It's a really odd league by the way it's promoted, who they promote, how they promote it, how they make them bigger than life, that these are the greatest players in the history of the planet. And you sit there and go, no, they aren't. And my problem with, with, with several of them, and this goes specifically to Kawhi Leonard, is the number of games he misses during the course of the season. Now, is the payoff that they won the championship? Yeah, but that's not your job. Championship is the ultimate. You're doing everything you can to win the championship. But man, you got paying customers. Can't keep not showing up. Uh, 
Nationals, Phils, bottom of the first, no score. Pirates lead the Cubs 6-2, bottom of the seventh. Astros lead the Rangers 6-3, bottom of the eighth. Yankees and Mets scoreless in the bottom of the first. Well, I can't believe the Yankees didn't score in the top half with all that offensive firepower. It's because everybody's still hurt right now. Uh, Everything's an excuse with you people. Everything's an excuse. Every time you turn around, it's another excuse. You know what's really weird about what they do with the NBA playoffs? They put all the Eastern games first and they put the Western games second. Even though they're all playing in the same spot. I have noticed that. I think it's probably just to create that normalcy even though it's far beyond that. I know. I'm just saying. Have you? Well, look. In other words, it's a 9 o'clock game Eastern time. So the Clippers are playing Denver which means the game is going to tip off at 7 o'clock in Denver and 6 o'clock all right, so if they play at 6.30, I mean, you don't want the game to be off at 4.30 in Denver and 3.30 in Los Angeles. So I do get that, but it's still, you look at it and go, okay, <laughs> that's interesting. You really play them in any order you want, especially on the weekend. But, yeah. Yeah, that's what it's so strange about this league. It's like, this is the guy. And then you watch the guy, and you're like, oh, he's good. He's really good. Like Giannis, I don't sit there. There's nothing about I watch Giannis. And I, I, again, you do it with a critical eye. I mean, because I watched a couple of games in my life. Great defender. Great driver to the bucket. Great finisher. Everything else, mediocre. He's at the free throw line, and you've got every single person on the Milwaukee bench finding religion. Oh, God, I pray, I pray, I pray to God he makes this for you. <laughs> LeBron goes to the line the same, in the same vein, and <laughs> you're, like, you're like, oh, he missed? <laughs> Curry goes to the line. He missed? Giannis goes to the line. He made it? <laughs> Jimmy Butler throws the ball toward his own basket with two timeouts. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, well, I was watching ESPN. They all hyped him up as this great playoff performer. And here he is, surrounded by two guys in front of his own bench, no less. And instead of calling timeout, throws the ball to his own basket. <laughs> like, going, what the heck are you doing? My goodness. In the CYO League, they're telling you (laughs) to call timeout. (laughs) We'll come back with more in a moment on News Radio 1070 WKOK. To celebrate the return of football, DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app, is giving all users a no-brainer to start the season. Have you ever heard of a football team losing by 100 points? Well, for Week 1, DraftKings Sportsbook has moved the spread to Kansas City plus 101 points for all users. So even if Kansas City loses in historic fashion by 100 points, you would still cash your bet. That's a no-brainer. Plus, DraftKings is giving away up to 100 million dollars in prizes to all users who entered their free football survivor pool. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code 1070 to take advantage of this no-brainer of an offer. That's promo code 1070 to get in on all of the action for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, Pennsylvania only, in partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. Other terms and conditions and restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. You might be asking, where did the summer go? We still have plenty of nice weather, we hope. But Labor Day is upon us. It's the great grilling weekend of Labor Day. Celebrate with Fisher's Meats downtown Lewisburg. Fisher's Meats has all of your cookout essentials. Three-pound bag of hamburger patties, just $14.99. If your gang likes steaks on the grill, choose Western New York strip steaks on sale at $9.99 a pound. Five pounds of country store hot dogs, $14.95. Boneless and skinless chicken breasts, perfect for grilling at a perfect price, $3.09 a pound. Peggy's homemade baked beans are the perfect accompaniment at $4.39 a pound. 
And don't forget about Fisher's famous sides, always fresh made macaroni, potato, chicken, and ham salads. Fisher's cheeses and cold cuts are sure to save on your prep time and please your guests. Fisher's Meats, 228 St. John Street, Lewisburg. Wishing you a safe, fun, and delicious Labor Day holiday. Fisher's Meats, they trim their meat, not their customers. Hi, this is your home information systems technician at Better Business Solutions. Did you know that at Better Business Solutions, we have well over 1,200 home users and a strong established base of business? And depending upon the problem you have with your equipment, you may choose to have us work at your site, our site, or on your equipment remotely. We hope you don't have a computer or network problem, but if you do, remember Better Business Solutions. Contact us at betterbusinesssolutions.com or 570-275-5844. For healthier crops and stronger yields, count on Nutrien Ag Solutions. By partnering with the leader in plant nutrition, you'll have access to innovative products and unmatched service that deliver impact and efficiency to every acre. Healthier crops, happier growers. Lead the field this season and beyond. Find your local crop consultant at NutrienAgSolutions.com. With winter weather just around the corner, contact a qualified service technician to ensure that your propane system is operating safely. Make sure that everyone in your family knows what propane smells like and what to do in the event of a gas leak, including knowing where the gas supply valve is and when and how to safely close it. Call us today to learn more. Brought to you by the Pennsylvania Propane Gas Association and your local propane service providers. Great to have you with us on the show today. The number for the day, do you want to know what our number for the day is? Sure. 1.7. All right. So. <laughs> that is an, that is the definition of an inside joke. <laughs> yes. But you liked it. Uh, you liked it. Admit it. I do. Uh, I do. I'm going to feel like I'm doing a series of rants today. You are in rare form, but I kind of like it. Look, I, again, I... You sound more like me now. I'm rubbing off on you this this no, soon. No, I felt, no, I felt <laughs> like this for, I've, I felt like this for a long time. It's just... You know, I finally settled down and watched, a, you know, more of the NBA playoffs uh, last night. For whatever reason, that's just what I went with. I've watched probably more hockey than anything to this point. Oh, me too. And baseball. Uh, and I've watched baseball. But again, you know, I, I think, to be honest with you, the concept of an opener is illogical. I see Tom Seaver pass away, and I'm thinking that's, to me, that... That's a pitcher. We're seeing the worst pitching I've ever seen in my life on an every night basis. I don't mean starters. I'm talking about bullpens. Hey, look, I watch Aaron Nola pitch. I really enjoy watching Aaron Nola pitch, especially when he's got that breaking ball going. I really enjoy watching Zach Wheeler pitch. Those are two starters that know what the role of a starting pitcher is. For the first time in my life, I can't watch the Red Sox. I can't watch them. Holy mackerel. They're running guys out there that I think were, were riding the subway earlier in the day. Can you pitch? Sure. Taking your calls at 800-795-9565. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motors Studio, here's Steve Jones. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. And online at sunburymotors.com. Ford, Lincoln, Kia, Hyundai, and great pre-owned inventory, fabulous sales staff, and 
service department. Look, I'm just, you're like you need just even routine maintenance. They're just great at what they do over there. It is Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf and online at sunburymotors.com. Yes, I know it sounds like it's a get-off-my-lawn day. But in essence, I have been saying the same things I've been saying the entire time. Let's talk about basketball, baseball, analytics, so important. James Franklin uses analytics. Patrick Chambers uses analytics. But they use it the right way. They use it as a guide. It's not the be-all, end-all. A lot of times it ends up confirming what they were thinking. Sometimes it gives them something else to think about. But that's the role of it. You can't make every decision based on analytics. You can't make every decision based on your feel for the game. There's a middle area here. A middle area. Sometimes you'll see a manager or a coach or whomever. You'll take a look at the card. Well, it's because they they were doing their homework. Some of it based on film study, some of it based on, you know, analytics. This one just reminds them, okay, that's right. Let's let's do it this way. But I I just don't, you know, if somebody, nobody's let me in at at MIT. I know they haven't, okay? I don't even think they'd let me on campus. But I know they have no national championship banners. Okay. The saying, I might have noticed. NBA playoffs last night. Some of the worst basketball I've seen in the last two minutes of a game. You know, it's interesting. I'll hear people call the show or say to me about something Penn State, how oh, the last two minutes, look at the mistakes they made. I'm watching professionals. six, seven to ten years older than they are making the same if not worse mistakes. So, talked about that. The Tom Seaver thing got me going today. A guy that had um, a great career and a guy that took the ball all the time and when he took the ball he expected himself to go out and do everything he could to finish the job and did and so, and I keep asking and I've asked this question for many years on the show so these are not new questions you may be saying oh he's on a roll he's on a rant and these are the same things I've talked about for years I've used it in this context Somebody pull Leo Mazzoni aside. Why did Tom Glavin, Greg Maddox, and John Smoltz not have arm trouble? How? Why? How come Tom Seaver didn't have arm trouble? Nolan Ryan. Bob Gibson. Juan Marichal. Tom Seaver, Jim, you know, after, Jim Palmer had a couple of issues early in his career, 67, 68, but from 69 on, when did Jim Palmer have, a, have an arm issue? When did Kurt Schilling have an arm issue? When? Today you're you know you're shutting pitchers down. I know it's the Strasburg thing. We're going to shut him down. You're going to shut him down. Zion Williamson. Well, he reached his minutes limit. He reached his minutes limit. He's 20 years old. Again, yeah, well, these are all things we've talked about. I, and we encourage people not to play anymore as a media. 
I uh, think boy could get hurt. He, you know, he should opt out. Huh? What? I stunk at sports. You couldn't pay me to opt out. <laughs> hey, don't play anymore. No, I'm going to keep playing. We're going to offer you money. No, I'm going to keep playing. But that's me. Now, on the myocarditis part, I'm not quite sure, to be honest with you, that everyone has the context with which Wayne Sebastianelli, my good friend Wayne Sebastianelli, Um, they brought him in to talk to the State College Area School Board about this. Perfect. You have a one of the truly great physicians, especially orthopedic surgeons in the country, who studies everything. Have him talk to the school board. Have him talk to those who are watching the school board. Great. And he's talking about myocarditis. So this, of course, became a major headline. That's being, you know, it's in USA Today. It is in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Uh, it first appeared um, in Saturday Daily Times. And it's the context that isn't quite right. That's not what he said. Okay, that's that's not what he said. And that's when he is right th- this is what all right it is the one third all right the one third He's talking about 30 to 35 percent are those who needed to get an EKG or an MRI to see if they had myocarditis, that they needed to get it. Not, okay, let's just pick one. Uh, 100 student athletes of the Big Ten test positive. Everyone's making it seem that all 100 then underwent cardiac MRIs. They didn't. So in other words, it's a, there's 133 of them have it. That's not what happened. Of the 100, all right, let's just let's pick a number. Of the 100, let's do simple math here. Of the 100 that test positive, so we'll round it off. Let's say 45 or experience a kind of feeling or a symptom, shortness of breath, like chest doesn't quite feel right, all right? That would make a doctor say, hey, let's do a cardiac MRI. And of those 45, 15 of them have it. See, that's what he's ta- that's, that's what he was talking about. Those who actually need it. Not anybody who tests positive for COVID automatically gets one. That's not what happened. Okay, and now you have people saying one third of Big Ten athletes who tested positive for COVID appear to have marked it. That's not what he said. It's of those where the doctor felt the need to take the extra step based on what symptoms were displayed. They decided to do it, and of that group, thirty to thirty-five percent had it. Not every single person. It's like you got to be kidding me. I mean, I would say you can't make this stuff up, but I swear half the people that do this for a living make this stuff up.
Dan Wetzel tweeted. All right. Wayne Sebastianelli said he didn't know of any comparable tests involving flu. I'm sorry. Uh, but said this is a different virus, was very open about his uncertainty. He said specifically that there is a need for more study and testing about it. It's pretty nuanced and a lengthy conversation. His comments were praised and condemned wholly. In truth, they're more down the middle. This is a very reasonable person, and Wayne is an extremely reasonable person. Okay? Okay. But he was clear. Wayne was very clear when you watched the State College School Board meeting last night. was very clear that the Big Ten has not cardiac MRI'd every athlete who tested positive for COVID. The Big Ten has not cardiac MRI'd every athlete who's tested positive. Only the ones where the physician based on what the athlete was telling me, thought, you know what? Let's take this extra step. Let's take a look and see what's going on here based on what you've told me. And in those cases, about a third had the level of uh, inflammation that was determined to be myocarditis. So I go back to 100 round numbers. 100 have myocarditis, excuse me, 100 have COVID-19. But 45 of them are complaining of symptoms where they can kind of feel it in their chest, Real shortness of breath. They really can't generate whatever. So the doctor for those 45, the other 65 aren't complaining of that. Some are complaining of a sniffle. Some are complaining or they're they're asymptomatic, whatever, but overall feel fine. Those 65 are okay. It's the 45 that eh, complain like, eh. And of those 45, they then do the test and 15 of them have it, which means 85 don't. That's what it, Okay. Oh, I feel like I sp- spend more time explaining stuff. Oh, I just want to do games. All right, we'll come back with more in a moment. You're on News Radio 1070 WKOK. When it comes to car buying, there's the other guy's way, and then there's the SMC way. The other guys force you into a vehicle you really don't want. The Subway Motors way lets you take the time you need to browse, ask questions, and take the test drive and think on it. For over 100 years, the Merth family and all their employees have made your experience the most pleasant one you'll ever have. The other guys won't offer you the best price for your trade, no matter how much they say they will. The SMC way is their promise to provide you with the most money the market shows your vehicle's worth. The SMC way is to offer you all applicable factory rebates on new vehicles and generous discounts. Looking for a pre-owned vehicle? The SMC Way checks each vehicle in a 200-mile radius to determine the lowest price, then beat it. It's the lowest price promise, just part of the SMC Way. The choice is up to you. The other guy's way or the SMC Way. The SMC Way wins every time. Sunbury Motors Company in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and at sunburymotors.com. Selling more cars and satisfying more customers for over 100 years. By the way, uh, Keith Mull brought up another one, Steve Carlton. Take the ball, go out, get it done. Look, I realize that's a rare breed. I got that. You know, I understand, you know, Bob Gibson, rare. Juan Marichal, rare. Nolan Ryan, rare. Tom Seymour. I realize they're, they're the best of the best, the greats of the greats. But, man, there are not many of those around today. I think there are guys that want to be. I think Strasburg actually wants to be. I think Shearzer wants to be. I think Nola wants to be. As examples. You know, I kind of felt like Chris Sale was like that. You know, until finally Chris Sale, after all, you know, finally... broke down. And some of those names you mentioned, Steve, the Nolas, the Scherzers, I mentioned Scherzer last night. He was not happy that he got taken out of that game last night with the Phils. And there are guys like that. Look, I mean, Verlander. Verlander's like that. He doesn't want to be taken out. But they have no control because what are most of their, some of their managers doing? They're looking at the books. Well, they're not just looking at the books. They're being told by upper management. I mean, Baseball managers need to be given more freedom to manage. 
right? Your job is to get the personnel. My job is to manage them. It's not your job. You want to manage them? Fine. Take both jobs. Enough's enough. Okay. This is what I, you know. This is what I think the lineup should be. All right. Go trade somebody. Oh. <laughs> or go bring me something. Bring me the groceries, like Bill Parcells used to say. If I'm Joe Girardi right well, now. Uh, let me give you an old Fran Fisher line, which was great. That's why you love Fran so much. One time, one of the sales guys for Learfield says, hey, I have a couple suggestions to you about the broadcast. And he looked over and he said, go sell something. <laughs> <laughs> that was Fran's line. It uh, is the other thing, too, Steve, when it comes to these new seven-inning games, when you have the doubleheaders now just for this season. Yeah. I just I don't understand. If you're a starting pitcher, especially if you want to say bullpen arms and knowing how bad bullpens have been across the league this year, Leave your guy in if he's pitching well. Don't take him out because you want to just put your closer in because it's the end of the game. If he's pitching well, keep him in. That's that simple. I've seen many, many times this year with the Phillies, with the Yankees, with everybody included. Leave the guy in. I know. It's only a seven-inning game. That's, that's when you want to get a complete game. Seaver was a great pitcher. Yeah, but I left out, I left out Steve Carlton. But there, there are some pitchers today that want to take the ball and just go, go, go. Get mad when they're taken out. I mean, I kind of feel in a lot of ways John Lester's like that with the Cubs. But, yep. Dick Girardi tomorrow. Uh, we might also might get Jody uh, McDonald on, Jody Mack, uh, whose dad was the uh, general manager of the Mets during the Tom Seaver era. But, yeah, it's been an interesting day. It's, you know, an interesting couple of days. To the credit of many, it's been another day of misinformation and half-truth. Like I said, what Wayne said, okay. What Wayne said last night to the State College Area School Board, it's being portrayed that one-third of all athletes have this. That's not what he said. Okay? Not, okay? not every athlete who was tested positive for COVID has had a cardiac MRI. They haven't. But there's a certain group of them. Like I said, if there's 100 that test positive, round number, and 45 of them are experiencing s- symptoms that, you know what? The doctor says, hey, let's take a closer look at this. Or, or 30. Let's just say 30. 30 of them. So 100 test positive. 30 are like, ah, oh, geez. I mean, I really I just I get so tired. And I'm like, you know, I'm worn down. I mean, my chest is not quite right. So they give them a cardiac MRI. And of those 30, 10 have it. A level of inflammation somewhere. Which, by the way, one of the keys to recovery, this is, okay, everyone acts like it's some sort of death sentence. Can you die from it? Yes. Do you die from it? Most times, no. Usually rest is the key. You know, they can give you some other meds along the way, but normally rest. And how long is rest? Well, it's anywhere from three to six months. Normally with an athlete, they like to see six months. They feel good about that six months. But, you know, a lot of people, it clears up in three weeks. It's not what he said. He was very clear. And for some reason, in being very clear, everybody ran with something else. And again, it clears up. Sometimes the finding is incidental. and doesn't warrant any further concern. Okay? I mean, there's so... I've just... 
There are some days where you feel like you're just shoveling garbage against the tide. My mother had a different word for it. <laughs> I use garbage. Sandy Barber, James Franklin coming up in a little more than an hour. I'll be asking questions. There will be no rants. As much as Matt wants me to. Matt likes it when I rant. Because it keeps him from going home and looking at little Luke and ranting to him. By the way, Kathy made one quick comment about Luke the other night. He goes, he's really a cute little guy. Which he is. Oh, I see that little guy. You know what I think every single time? (laughs) Thank goodness for his mom. All right. Yeah, actually, that's true. (laughs) Just remember, the key number is 1.7.